I was in the eighth grade and she was in the sixth. I was 16 and she was 13. She's 13 years old. She just hit puberty. I could just tell like she was like lost. Like I felt like she needed help and like I have to help her. Like I have to help her. This is my friend. Like I have to help her. You know what I mean? And um she's like, Can you just please come with me? If you ask me why I went, it's because of her. I didn't know anybody else. She was the only person I knew. And we went to this motel. And these guys, I mean, they were literally about to start fighting over me, like fighting. He's like, no, I got her, I got her. He's like, no, no, she's mine. Majority of the girls that are in juvenile hall are in there because of this. 90% of them, as soon as they get released, they're going back. They're going back. I started in Compton uh, about five years ago and noticed that there were a lot of girls coming through who had been charged with prostitution. And it really surprised me. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand the dynamics, but worked with them for several years and realized that we really weren't doing a whole lot to make progress with them, to really help them. So with uh, a couple of other judges in the area and our probation department, we worked together to start a special program to provide additional uh, supervision and services to girls who had been forced into prostitution. Saving Innocence has rescued and rehabilitated hundreds of American children from sex trafficking between the ages of 9 and 18. We are providing crisis services to 90 kids right now. Saving Innocence is the first nonprofit organization to be contracted out by the Los Angeles Superior Court. We partner with local law enforcement to do that crisis intervention on street level. We work within police stations and on the streets alongside law enforcement, so we make sure that those children are identified as children, as victims, as survivors from that point of crisis and rescue. And then we walk them through a long-term rehabilitation and restoration process. The folks from Saving Innocence can really work with the girls on a much more intimate level, and it's uh, in a context that's safe for the girls. Boy, I cannot say enough good things about Saving Innocence. I almost don't even know where to start with that. Um, the hole in the system, if you will, the hole, whether it was the criminal justice system or the societal system, was the survivor support. And the desperate need that our communities had for somebody like Kim and Saving Innocence to rescue these kids. So the brilliance of a place like Saving Innocence is that they're a safe haven and a, a rescue site for, for these kids because when the jail doors close and we walk out of the courthouse, it may end for us, but it doesn't end for them. And so they need their innocence saved. And the great thing about these kids is that they are the most intelligent, strong, beautiful young girls that I have ever met. They bounce back and they are resilient and they are truly the leaders of tomorrow. They're the leaders of today. I mean, they teach me probably more than I could ever teach them. And you know, you have girls that are writing poetry and want to grow up and be lawyers and doctors and social workers and teachers, you know, and they'll do it. If there was a team of people, a community that would band together to say, no more, we're gonna find these kids, we're gonna give them the help that they need, that's what's gonna save these kids' lives.